Hello, my Canadian gardeners, cold climate gardeners, and gardeners of the extremes. How are you guys doing today? And we are on to day two of the soil series. So if you don't know me, my name is Ashley. I'm a soil scientist by formal education. And on this channel, we try experiments and we look at myths and legends about gardening and we try to prove them right or wrong and in this series we are all about soil we are going through everything from organic fertilizer inorganic fertilizer soil structure and everything in between so if you missed the episode from yesterday make sure you go check that out and so you get the rest of the episodes going forward you are going to want to tap that subscribe button hit that notification bell so you can have a week of learning it is the countdown to cold climate gardening and it's starting soon so we need to learn about soil prep and in today's video we are going to be looking at soil physics and specifically how water moves through the soil. We're gonna be looking at the different combination of aggregates that you need in your soil to have it act a specific way. So if you are here from day one, make sure you give this video a thumbs up because that obviously means you're enjoying. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you tried the experiment we tried yesterday and what it means about your soil. And today we are also gonna be doing an experiment, but instead of doing it at the end of the video, we're gonna be doing it at the beginning of the video because we won't get the results till the end of the video. I expect this is going to take time. So because we're gonna be talking about soil porosity again and how it affects soil physics and how the different aggregates and combinations of aggregates affect the physics, we need to look at how water moves through something called capillary action. So the way we're gonna set up this experiment is with some blue water that is just food safe, food coloring. We have our imitation strand of sand or silt. Um, as you can see, there's lots of air spaces in here. It's not tightly compact, so this is going to be our mock-up for a sandy soil. This piece of paper towel is going to act like our clay soil. Combination of paper towel and our sandy silt String is going to be the imitation of a soil that is a mixed aggregate, which is what most potting soil is. So what we're gonna expect from this is we have three bowls that I will show you at the end of the video. We're gonna see how much water from that cup we can get soaked up and put into each one of those bowls via capillary action, which we will talk about a bit later and why it's important to your soil. So I'm gonna set this up and then I'll be right back. Okay, so while we're letting that faster, let's talk about what we are going to see down here. So yesterday when we looked at soil porosity, we looked at compaction, just compaction of soil in general, and how that affects the flow of water through our soil profile. This can go from our garden to our pots in our house. Now today what we're gonna be looking at is what exactly is in the soil and how that affects how the water moves through. This is what soil scientists like to call soil physics. Now, when we look at the physics of soil, we don't just look at water typically, we look at gas emissions and air exchange, lots of other things, but today for the purpose of gardening and gardeners and houseplant enthusiasts, this is what we care about. So, we have our soil particles and we looked at those, we have the sand that looks kind of like rocks or marbles, then we have the silt, which looks like grains of rice, and then we have the clay, which looks like kind of rubber bands laying on its side. When we talked about that yesterday, you might notice that the soil pores between the clay are a lot smaller than the soil pores between the sand. That means the effects of gravity are going to relate differently in a clay soil than in a sandy soil. In a clay soil, you're going to notice that the water is just going to stay on top, something similar to the compacted soil that we saw yesterday. But a sandy soil, the water is going to just run right through, something similar to we saw the uncompacted soil yesterday. So now soil, typically you're not going to go in a sandbox and plant your garden and you're not going to go into a clay bed because good luck to you if you can and plant a garden. What we do as gardeners is we mix. So we mix in a bit of organic material, sand, silt, 
and clay to figure out the perfect combination. Now, in one of our later episodes, we're going to be going through actually store-bought cactus mix and how to make your own cactus mix. And then we're also gonna be looking at garden soil, my garden soil, and how we can add aggregates to that to fix it. But before we can do that, we have to understand how those relate to each other. If we mix clay into our soil, it's going to help shrink our soil porosity. When we shrink our soil porosity, we end up something similar to a downy towel. In the downy towel, we have capillary action. So it goes against the forces of gravity, gets pulled up through the soil profile, and is able to stay up near the roots. Organic material also helps with this. Now, when a soil scientist refers to organic material, they don't necessarily mean organic, as in organic fertilizer or organic manure. They mean things like anything that used to be alive. So that can be leaves, grass, manure, compost, anything, roots, anything that's been alive in the past. Inorganic refers purely to the particulates of soil, not inorganic fertilizer. Now, if we have a soil that's full of sand, the water is just going to run through. Some of it's going to stay suspended in profile, but not all of it. We won't be able to draw or wick any moisture back up into the profile, which is a strictly sandy soil. So, as you might imagine, if you have cactus or a succulent, you may consider adding more sand to your soil profile. Now, beyond gravity and beyond capillary action, there's also the effects of the air exchange and heat on your soil. When I think of soil and soil structure, I don't like to just look at the soil aggregates when it comes to gardening. I also like to look at the container the plant is in and the soil is touching. Technically, that is a part of your structure. So that means if you have a plastic container that has restricted its flow from the air outside and restricted the amount of moisture that can penetrate from the sides, you are less likely to have that pot dry out faster. It is going to take a longer period of time. Versus if you had a terracotta pot, which is actually clay, if you put a terracotta pot in water, you'll notice that it itself will also start drawing water upwards into the pot because it is clay particles, capillary action works against gravity to draw the moisture in. However, because it is porous, it also allows air to penetrate the pot. That means it is more likely to dry out faster. So if you have a succulent or a cactus and you're living in a cold climate and you have it indoors, I suggest you plant it in a terracotta pot. The reason being is it is going to dry out faster, so you're going to avoid the potential of overwatering. And if you do overwater, you're going to have that airflow and that gas exchange to help let the moisture release into the atmosphere. Now, if you have a plant and you're notorious for underwatering and totally forgetting about it, I suggest you get something like a ceramic or a plastic pot. Again, it is a part of your soil structure. It is going to stop the air from flowing through the soil. It is going to limit the gas exchange and is going to keep the moisture inside the soil profile. So let's take a look at our experiment. Okay, so we're here checking on the experiment. Remember, this one was our sand. So as you can see, there is no blue dye and there is no capillary action in here. And that is because the sand is fully reliant on the water movement of gravity. So this will never, it doesn't matter how long you leave it in there, it will never turn blue. This one is our full clay. So, and this one, you can see it's, it's is using capillary action. There's a lot of capillary action happening here. However, it's also not putting any blue dye in the container. So that tells us that clay retains water heavily, but it also retains the nutrients heavily. So that means all nutrients, even the bad stuff, like sodium. So a full clay pot is less than ideal as well because we don't want all our nutrients and all our water to be soaked up and held in suspension all the time. So this is not ideal either. However, this is our sand and clay mixture. So this would be like our soil aggregate. 
This would be our potting soil. And as you can see, we have water in the bottom. So this one has a little bit of capillary action, so there's still some water suspended up near the roots and area, but we've also used the forces of gravity to ensure the water comes through the profile fully and washes out the bottom. So that means things like salt will not build up in our soil profile, but this also means that our soil will not hold water to the point that it'll become waterlogged and there will be zero air in the soil profile. So because of the sand or the silt that is combined with the clay, we have the water and the nutrients in the clay portions, and then we have air in the sand and silt portions. That means our roots have access to air, water, and nutrients. So this is why we look at all the possibilities, full sand, full clay, and a combination of the two. This is why we don't ever want to plant in just clay, or just sand or just silt and we want a combination of all of them because as you can see we get the effects of all the benefits and that is what the plant needs to grow so i hope you guys enjoyed that video and that experiment let me know in the comments below if you knew that there is something called capillary action within soil and if you've ever done something called bottom watering that's exactly what this is so if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share. I'd appreciate it very much, and I will see you back for day three, which is chemistry. Oh, hey there. Are you still watching? Make sure to hit that subscribe button for some more awesome plant videos.